Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com um, weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a, a great start to the weekend. It is about uh, ten twenty in the morning Saturday. I'm not sure when you guys are going to uh, get this video, but hopefully you guys are doing well. Hope everybody is trading well, and hopefully everybody is feeling well. Again, at the end of the day, it's all about health, and everything else is a cherry on top. Uh, if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for spending a few moments with us. Uh, only thing I ask is if you like the content, again, it's a little bit daily reminder, but if you like the content, all I ask is take a second, uh, hit the like button, like, share, subscribe, uh, show support for the channel. So let's talk about the tape. Mark is good, right? Breaking news, Mark is good. I, it, it was so good on Tuesday, if you guys, you know, I don't know if you guys even noticed, but Tuesday, there was no video, right? Uh, Tuesday, there was no video. Uh, this was a short week ahead of the 4th of July holiday. And, you know, as we saw, the fireworks started way before the 4th of July, and they continued after the 4th of July celebration. Again, what, what are you going to say? You know, at times, you know, there's nothing more left that we can say about this tape. Um, I hear people, you know, still complaining about this market on, on the volume. It's how much volume do you need? I mean, <laughs> Nvidia trades 400 million shares a day. Tesla trades 100 million shares a day. How much more volume do you need? So you have all these built-in excuses why people are not re are participating. Um, you know, look, I, I concentrate on the mega cap names. You know, the Apples, Teslas of the world, the Vagos and Metas and SMCIs and Apples and Googles of the world. Look. It, it definitely matters um, what you trade, um, just as important of how you trade. Uh, look, if you're trading mid-cap stocks, I have no idea what they're doing. If you're trading uh, small-cap stocks, I literally have no idea what they're doing. Uh, but I do know the, the mega-cap group has been out of its mind uh, for almost now, you know, over a year and a half since the bear market ended in 2020. Uh, two, it's just been absolute phenomenal. It's been going crazy. Um, really not more that you can, you can say to describe, uh, the price actions you can see on the screen. Uh, the Qs are all time highs. Uh, you look at the spies, all time highs. You look at the diamonds, not quite. And if you look at the IWM, definitely underperforming, uh, other indexes. And that's kind of my whole point. If you notice, uh, the the Qs, right? All time highs. The spies, all time highs. The IWM again represents smaller capitalization companies. Where are they? Well, they can't get out of its own way. They they can't get anywhere. They're below the fifty day moving average, and that's my point. You know, not everything is going to react exactly the same. You know, you had this big run on crypto. Now, crypto with Bitcoin is is coming down. So you're going to have uh, periods in your career that whatever your niche is, right? My specific niche right now is going crazy, right? Uh, but if you are a crypto trader, you know, maybe, you know, not 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 the greatest thing you could do if you if your focus is on the small and mid cap names, just based what I'm seeing on the IWM's chart. Yeah, you'll probably catch something here and there. Again, we're still in the bull market. Uh, but again, the indexes can't get out of its own way every single time it tries to get back above the 50 day gets uh, rejected. And, you know, the one common denominator behind all these really, really big moves. And again, I'm not an options trader. I'm probably the least qualified human being. And despite me trading for 25 years, I'm probably the least qualified to talk about options, but I do recognize the importance of option flow, uh, institutional money flow uh, in a directional bias at the same time with short expiration, because that's what's leading prices. And if you look at all the exaggerated moves and we'll talk about four, you know, three or four symbols. Uh, if you look at the exaggerated moves and you're watching this channel, when option flow confirms and there's a macro daily confirmation that confirms with it, the stock is probably going to react in that direction. So let's let's talk about a couple of examples. If you've been watching 
uh, the channel for the last week. Let's just go back a week. I'm not going back anymore, right? We've been talking about Avago. You know, we've been talking about Avago from the 16, 1620 break, right? It resumed, reclaimed back the five day moving average, traded up to the 648 level, reclaimed the 50 day moving, uh, for the 10 day moving average, and traded. My, you know, my price target was in the 1750s, traded up to 1765. Congratulations, all you guys who caught that move. Massive move. But here is the common denominator. If you if you go back, right? If you go back three, four, five videos, right? We've we talked about every single video. What was what was the message, right? They were coming for short term 1650s, 1700s, 1750 calls. We also turned around. There was a notable one that came in for the July 19th expiration for 1700s, 1.4 million. There was a buyer who came in on the August 1900 calls. For 877000 the result is, right? The result is daily confirmation means institutional money flow equals price action advancement. Uh, look at a name, for example, like Meta, right? If you've been watching Meta, if you've been watching this broadcast for the last several days, I mean, for the last even several weeks, what we've been talking about, non-stock, they were coming for the 719 expiration 540 calls over and over and over and over and again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Meta got above the five-day moving average. It just exploded into 540. Uh, look at Apple. Uh, you know, I cleared out my runner yesterday a little, a little too, a little too soon. I mean, a beautiful move. But they were coming again. They were coming for the short-term weeklies: 222, 225s, 222, 225s. And Apple absolutely exploded. And last but not least, that right now is an absolute orbit. Right, an absolute orbit is Tesla. If you guys remember when it finally broke out, uh, when it finally broke out above the one uh, above the one ninety nine area that we've been talking about, the April highs. What were they coming for, guys? Remember what were they coming for? The two hundred fives, the two tens. Once they closed above the two hundred six and reclaimed the two hundred day moving average, what were they coming for? The two twenties, the two thirties, and then and the beginning of the week, right? The beginning of the week, they started coming for the two fifties and yada yada yada. Here we are at two fifty. So. Even if you're not an options player, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm not. I'm I'm a hundred percent equity. But if you're if you're even not an options player, folks, get yourself an option scanner. It doesn't make a difference which one, right? If you trade, especially uh, mega copper or anything, anything that has and uh, money flow in the institutional side, uh, get yourself an option scanner. There's plenty of them. There's uh, there are uh, TradeAlert.com. There's Cheddar Flow, there's Black Box Stocks, there's Flow Aldo, there's, there's hundreds of them. They're all comparable. They go from you know probably $75 to about $400, but they're all comparable. Get yourself an option scanner and just let this thing give you, you know, let this thing give you ideas throughout the day because the, the common denominator, again, I can't I keep saying that word, is the, the formula for option flow is multiple repeat buyers with short-term expiration. So for a stock, for example, let's just use an example of a stock that I'm watching this week, right? So look at crowd, right? Look at crowd. Crowd is in a big, big base, long, long base, right? Here's the breakout in the June highs. So let's pretend crowd, they start coming for the four, you know, the 405 calls, 410 calls, and they're coming for weekly expiration. Uh, next week's out, weekly expiration, next week's out over and over and over and over again, the higher probability that when the stock finally gets above the channel and they start repeating those buys, the higher probability it's probably going to see those levels. So it's very, very important, guys. Get yourself an option scanner. Um, you know, if you, especially if you are trading on the option side, it'll give you a great idea. It'll give you great color of where the institutional money flow is coming from. So when you're finally setting an alert and you do your charting, you say, well, wait a minute. I've been watching crowd, right? It's on my list. And now they're coming for 20 points out of the money with a week of expiration until expiration. Maybe I should pay attention. That really gives you a lot of confidence that the trade will probably work in that direction. So be very, very uh, important. So I give you another idea, right? I'll give you a real-time idea with NVIDIA, okay? NVIDIA has been kind of stuck in this little two-week channel. Again, no complaints, right? We had a massive, massive move on this thing right before 4th of July. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Okay. So it's been stuck in this channel here for a while, but but Friday, right? Today was Friday. Yeah. Friday, yesterday, we saw massive bets coming in for the next two weeks of expiration, right? 
We saw the 128s, 130s, 133s, 135s, 133s, 130s, 135s into weakness. Keep this in mind. The stock was weak uh, on Friday. They got downgraded by some Mickey Mouse uh, research company uh, through through the week. I think Nancy Pelosi started buying uh, NVIDIA. Again, I think she threw $10 million behind the idea. But the point is you're not anticipating the move, right? You're not anticipating the move and said, oh, Dan said this option flow. I'm going to buy this Monday. You can be buying it Monday in the middle of the range. Just wait for it for, to get the top of the range, right? You're accumulating data over and over and over again that's telling you, hey, these guys are coming for short-term expiration in the next two weeks. The 130s, the 133s, the 135s, we even saw some September 150s. We know there's option flow on the money. We know there's institutional bias in the same direction. Let me just set an alert again in every single uh, every single chart platform has alerts, right? Set, you know, this is e-signal, right? Set yourself an alert. So when the stock gets above the range, you already know in the back of your mind, they're coming for all that flow. You can go into that trade with a lot of conviction versus somebody Monday morning and go, well, I think the video is going to be higher in the next two weeks. Let me buy calls. And the stock is still in the middle of the range. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But if you're a, an options trader, not only are you fighting uh, price, you're fighting time. So you can't afford to sit there and go, I hope it works. Just wait for the stock to get above the channel. Let the options market continue to bet in that direction. And when it finally does confirm, usually good things are going to happen. So that's it. I mean, that's it. Let's talk about uh, Friday's pivots. Again, monster moves, guys. Monster, monster moves continue uh, in the mega cap space, uh, all you need to do is wait for those damn confirmations. Let's talk about it. Uh, here's the first one. Netflix, 684 and 690 needs to build. Netflix uh, traded up to about 697. Look at this move on Netflix. Look at this move. It took out this whole 684 range, 690 range, and traded all the way up to almost 698. Great move. Great, great move on Netflix. Uh, Lucid, I like, never confirmed. Here's my point. So last Tuesday, we had this massive pivot on uh, NVIDIA, 2340. Uh, it traded all the way up to 2830s. That's where basically it got rejected uh, on on uh, on Friday. But that's the point. They were just really coming aggressively for the, for the options market. Now it just needs to confirm last week's highs this week, and NVIDIA might take off. Here's another example. AMD went crazy on Monday, uh, on Friday, and finally broke out of a massive range. Guys, 166.82 needs to confirm the June 20 highs. Guys, look what AMD did. Look what AMD did. Just a phenomenal move. Phenomenal move. And in the process, right, in the process, got back above uh, the May highs. This is the highest close in the whole formation. Again, they were coming for the 175 the 180s short-term expiration going to this week. And watch this thing for this week. If this thing confirms Friday's channel, man, this thing has room to this 179, 180 area. So again, massive moves uh, all over the place. Meta just lost its mind, completely lost its mind. If you've been watching this, we've been on this Meta move for about two and a half weeks. And, but this was, anyway, this was really showed you the aggressive nature of the market. Uh, 5.11.30, and 513 needs to build. Again, if you've been watching this broadcast, nonstop July 19th expiration, 540 calls, stock trade closed at 540. A monster, absolute monster move. Uh, Pan W, I still like, never confirmed the top of the range here. Guys, watch this Pan W for the next uh, couple of days. It's going to be like crowd. If crowd goes, Pan W goes, and vice versa. Watch the top of the channel here. I still like this uh, setup. It didn't confirm on Friday. Uh, Apple, so we got along on, on Apple on Tuesday, it was it Monday? I had a runner coming into yesterday and I go, I'm going to try to close out my runner at 222. It got to 222 uh, a little bit after the open. I was like, wow, it's great. You know, I got a four and a half dollar move out of this thing. And then the damn thing went to 26. Again, shows you the aggressive nature uh, of this market. Yeah, I was just, I was happy with 222, right? Uh, Tesla gave us a little, a little trade to the downside on, on Friday before it exploded in the afternoon. Uh, 246 uh, held twice, went down to like 242 and a half. The one thing with Tesla, guys, always remember, and this I'm kind of going to end the video here, but kind of remember this. This is going on a parabolic move, magic ride, parabolic ma ma 
gravity is real, right? If you guys remember, NVIDIA went on a similar ride, similar ride, and then one day it got so gassed, buyers got so tired that it had a really nasty reversal. Again, if you're on this magic car carpet ride with Tesla, just look. That the last thing you want to do is keep on pushing highs, pushing highs, because look how far this is now. This is now, what, 60 points in five days away from the breakout, right? At some point this week, and again, I'm not saying this is the top, it's stupid, right? But at some point this week, it's going to give us a nice backside trade. It's just grabbing. It's just, it's just the reality. Uh, but they've been coming for the 280s, the 300s, um, multi-month uh, expirations going out. But at some point, the stock will gas out at this week. It's just, again, just common sense. It will gas out this week. We'll probably get us a backside trade for a couple of days. But I tell you one thing, Magic Carpet Ride is an understatement. So that's it, guys. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's enjoying their summer. God bless you all. And hopefully we'll see each other on the field on Monday. Take care.